run now. I'll continue to pronounce his name of the Swiss runner health minister in the original pharaonic way of Berset and not like the French camouflaged pronunciation Bercy. Here you see him with their pharaonic Tau symbol in the Templar's colors red and white behind him. Of course, it's a lamp, but don't you think that is a coincidence with the colors matching and all? These people do nothing randomly and they don't make mistakes. The Tau symbol, of course, represents the pharaonic Ankh for life, meaning their lives only. Here you can see the Tau symbol being the pharaonic Ankh behind Mr. Perset out of the Egyptian house of Seth. I quote from the internet, recently I read that the Tau symbol dated back to ancient Egypt and was used frequently in their art and architecture. Being quite familiar with Egyptian art, I found it unusual that I had never noticed this before. Then just a few moments ago, I happened to look at a picture of a Tau symbol, shaped like the one shown above on the right, and it clicked. The Tau symbol, the Tau symbolizes life, same as the Egyptian Ankh. The reason I hadn't noticed it before was because I was looking for a solitary capital T rather than a symbol which contained it. The Ankh and the Tau symbol are one and the same. So, you know, I filmed this a lot on Templars' commanderies, in Templars' castles, like the one in Spain, you know, at the entrance. And uh, if you look at the Ankh symbol, the ring on top of it, it's just to hold the Tau symbol. So when you hold it, you know, in your hands or in your hand, you won't see the ring. You know, it's just a grip to hold it. So, and to hold what? To hold the Tau symbol. Funny enough, only the Swiss Germans would pronounce his name in the original pharaonic way. Eu, das ist der Herr Berset, oder mache dus, a hoover habis dotit. That was Swiss German, which I can speak as well, and who say Berset in the only original way it should be. So here it says, th this is the family. Uh, Patricia family, it means uh, an elite family. You know, and they have a coat of arms with the, the, the bear in it and a knight and another bear. And a, I don't know what this all is, but it's, it's a real, it's a real coat of arms. The real crest. Yeah. So the name of the, the, the capital of Switzerland, Bern, it comes from the word a bear, you know, bear, Bern. In, English, in German, it's uh, ein, ein Bär. And they had bears in, they still have a bear pit in, in, in Bern, the capital of Switzerland. So this family, they had a lot of Landwirkte here. And that means a governor. You know? So you remember this word because I'll, I'll, I'll be coming back to it. It's important you know, to screen in the, the profile, remember? And, um, you know, th they're all in the same business as Mr. Perset today. And this is the real way, you know, the name used to be written, you know, you know, Per Seth, from the house of Seth. They're all pharaohs. 
And, you know, in, in through history, sometimes a letter falls away and from the Middle Ages. And in the Middle Ages, like in European languages, they had a lot of H, you know, that fell away. Like in France, you know, you don't even pronounce the H anymore, you know. It's, it's for the same reason. And um, so it's the, the, the Egyptian pharaonic house, the Per Set, the house the royal house of Seth, the lord of chaos. And he's bringing chaos, this, this guy. So you got his ancestors, Imbert Perset, an officer in the French, uh, you know, foreign legion, you know, and the uh, La Légion de Meuron, uh, you know, to, um, um, that was the, the king's regiment. And it says here, Burger von Bern the uh, Bernburger, which is like a secret society today. And Demeron, they're still in it. So, Imbert Berset II, and he was in the Großen Rat. You remember this too. It says the, the, the Grand uh, Conseil. It means the Great Council. It's a very important place. And uh, Mr. Berset's mother, Solange, I think her name was. Well, she is a in the in the Great Council, as their whole lineage was, and there was Hans Ber Perset also in the Great Council here, Großenrat. Beat Ludwig Perset also in the Großenrat, the Great Council. Johannes Perset also in the Großenrat, the uh, the Great Council. And you got this one here. He was also in the Regierung here. The government, it says. Uh, yeah, he was also in the, in the Great Council, just as Mr. Perset's mother. You know, they're still in the same line of business as today. So the family, they had a lot of governors, you know, Landwirkte. And I'll be right back, you know, to this word here. You remember that. So, there we go. Here is another, here it says, a Landvogt, another governor, uh, the English bailiff, not the American bailiff. Uh, American bailiff, as far as I understand it, is somebody who is in the, uh, in the Justice Department. And in English, the old bailiff was the, um, like, like a governor, you know. Or, or sheriff, like in the Robin Hood story, eh? And his name, this uh, uh, governor, Landvogt, his name was Albrecht Gessler. You know, and he was the uh, the governor, They, you know, in the William Tell Rebellion. Yeah, of the old Swiss Confederacy. And here you got William Tell. So, you see, you know, the whole story, is, you know, it's like fake, you know, like uh, this story plays like um, almost 500 years before the other Landvogt, you know, I just showed you before of the Perset Landvogt, governor of the Perset family, the house of Seth. So 500 years later, after their so-called William Tell story out of, you know, from out of the 13th century, 1291, well, they still had a Landvogt, you know, and they still had the same problem. So why do they, why do the, the Swissies, the peasants, the hillbillies, why do they keep this William Tell story as apparently, you know, to represent their liberation, you know, as apparently 500 years later, they still had the same problem with their Landvogt and being ruled by the elite and now called the Bernburger as from the pharaonic house of Perset. So, you know, even, you know, if this story would have been true, you know, it, it, it didn't bring anything, you know. History tells us, Swissies, they still had the same problem with the Landvogt, you know, ruling over them. And now, like 800 years later, <laughs> it's still the same problem, you know, of the seven heads of the beast ruling over the Swiss peasants, hillbillies, 
and telling telling them what to do. And now, of course, the other seventh head of uh, of the beast, you know, Mister Mister Mason Maurer, Uli Maurer, you know, he's pretending that you know that it, that's William Tell and everything that it you know it helps something. But eight hundred years later, it's still the same situation. So come on, people, wakey wakey, eh? You Swiss hillbillies, wakey wakey. Look, here it says, Solange Berset, his mother. So the whole Berset family is in the ruling business. His mother, Solange Berset, is a member of the Great Council of Switzerland, and her son, Alain Berset, is one of the seven federal councillors. So here it says about Alain Perset, uh, only in the French speaking uh, Wikipedia. Here it says, his mother, Solange Perset, has a political career here, it says in the cantons. And she is in the um, Le Grand Conseil, which means the great. Um, council, just like the ancestors were, you know, they were all in the uh, Grossenrat, as I just read. So you already, like 500 years ago, they were in the same business. Eh? So here he is, um, her son, Alain Perset, doing the Nazi salute. And it is a Nazi salute. I'll show that to you in a minute, how Swiss Nazis are doing exactly the same thing. So Alain Perset is one of the seven federal councillors. Here it says, the federal council. It all sounds like bloody Star Trek federal council of the Galactic Republic who got their ideas from Octogon in the Alps in the first place. Here, just look at the Octogon logo of the Star Wars Galactic Republic and their Federal Council. Yeah, just look at it. This is Octogon. Yeah, and the other one. Nice Nazi colors, octagon. So here it shows from Star Trek and the Galactic Federation, the Galactic Council. Here's Birdie Birdie again. And here it says a citizen of the Galactic Federation, just like Switzerland. Right? And we all know now. There's a lot of truth, visions of the future, and messages in Hollywood movies. So, what if? What if? Huh? Hail to the Galactic Federation of Octogon. Hail Octogon in the Alps. Just as these ones here who got their Hitler oath from the Galactic Republic in the Alps, ruling over the entire world, doing the same Hitler oath for their Federal Council. Hail the Federal Council of the Galactic Republic, Mr. Perset, House of Seth. Hail! 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 Look, here's Mr. Maurer of the Cowbells clan, Maurer the Mason, and here is Mr. Perset. Hail! 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 Hail the Galactic Federation of the Swiss Octogon! Hail! 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 Hail the Galactic Federation! 
of the Swiss Octogon. Hail, 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 Yashin and Boas. Hail the Galactic Federation of the Swiss Octogon. Hail, hail, hail. Hail the Galactic Federation of the Swiss Octogon. Hail, hail, hail. This one is called Blocher, one of the seven heads of the beast. Very dangerous. And I saw him at one of the meetings of the Octogon. Hail the Galactic Confederation of the Swiss Octogon. Hail, hail, hail. Hail the Galactic Confederation of the Swiss Octogon. Hail, hail, hail. So this one is an actual, also they're all seven heads of the beast. And this one here is the head of the, who was leading the actual Cowbells clan of the Freiheits uh, Triegler. And his name is Uli Maurer, which means the Mason. His real name means Mason. Hail the Galactic Confederation of the Swiss Octogon. Hail, hail, hail. Hail the Galactic Confederation of the Swiss Octogon. Hail, hail, hail. And here you see Yashin and Boas in the colors of the United Kingdom of Pharaoh of Upper Egypt, the White House Per Het, and Lower Egypt, the Red House Per Tasser. Switzerland, the octagon of the Galactic Confederation, is the base of Pharaoh. Hail the Galactic Confederation of the Swiss octagon. Hail. Hail, hail. Now look at their belt buckles. Templar's cross here, Swiss cross. You know, that's, it's, it's like a belt buckle competition here, you know. Well, buckle up, shit is coming your way. Hail the Galactic Confederation of the Swiss Octagon. Hail, hail, hail. Here he is, Mr. Perset of the House of Seth. The fascist Swiss hillbillies of the Nazi KKK Cowbells clan conspiring against humanity in a symbiosis with the masters and all doing the same Templar salute of the Octogon Nazi Templars, the same salute as their masters do. And here the masters of Octogon and their Perset, seventh head of the beast, conspiring against humanity in a symbiosis with the Swiss hillbillies and teaching the hillbilly Ku Klux Klan, Cowbells Klan, how to do the Nazi Templar salute, same as the masters do themselves. Hool, hool, hool. Look, all these Swiss Nazis have a brachycephalic head form, which is flat from the backside, just like Mr. Perset, House of the Underworld Federal Councillor. And look, now, there's nothing here behind the neck. The head is going straight over into the neck, into the shoulders. Him too, going straight into the, uh, and him too, all of them. This is brachycephalic. Uh, they all seem to have it. And there's very high concentration in Switzerland. Well, the Vatican belongs to the Swiss. Hail the Galactic Confederation of the Swiss Octogon. Hail, hail, hail. That the Vatican belongs to us 
forever. Hail, hail, hail. Here, when they founded Switzerland in 1291 with the William Tell, giving the same Nazi Templar salute, and it even says, one for all and all for one. Where we go one, we go all. Oh, I wonder if all seven heads of Swissy's Galactic Federal Council have flat heads with literally a part of their skulls missing, probably the part where the human emotions are. Now look, here they are, all seven of them. This is Mauro the Mason, this is Perset, they all have a lovely Swiss sign here. And look, here it says, the Federal Council the portal of the Swiss government, you know, like a, uh, like a stargate, you know, portal, like, uh, like that, like the CERN in Switzerland. And look, even this thing here, this thing here, look here, you can read it. I'm not allowed to pronounce it in the Templar's colors or Pharaonic colors, red and white. Um, it's an octagon, you see, just that they're, they're, eight things around it. Um, coincidence? No, there are no coincidences in this uh, level. I already told you in this video here from July 5th, 2015, that the Swiss do not have European skulls. Here you can see once more the cephalic index here of Europe with a complete, it's all black here where Switzerland is. I've shown that to you just before in the video as well. And here you can see the date July 5th, 2015 on my channel Gatsefrats. 10 days later, only 10 days after I published that film showing about the um, the different skull forms of the Swiss. On July 16th, so 10 days after, and that was July 16th, 2000, 2015, the Swiss Gestapo arrested me again in front of my three year old daughter who was crying her heart out and in front of my 12 year old son who is still traumatized by it. There you can see it, arrested on July 16th, 2015. So it means you make a video, which they don't like, and 10 days later, they'll haul you up again, you know, and lie some stuff together. Yeah, just look at the back of his head. So I guess the Swiss pharaohs, like the health minister Perset, from the house of Seth, didn't like very much this information on the Swiss brachycephalic craniometry with their flat heads of the Galactic Federal Council coming out in the open. Huh? Here, with his hands measuring, he seems to be saying to his pals, where we come from, we all have skulls like this. And all the Swiss flat-feated, flat-headed Gestapo could do after my video got published was lie. Haul me up in front of my crying and traumatized children and lock me up on a 20,000 Swiss francs ransom where I lost 30 kilos the next three months in a Swiss torture detention center. Now, seven years later, we're all under attack by them. And I don't feel so alone anymore in this state-inflicted misery. So I can give you some valuable intel, because I'm 40 years ahead of you, enduring this misery by them. So it seems that Perset's reptilian brain is intact, but a huge lobe 
of the human brain missing where his skull should be. Yeah, look at the back of his head. There's nothing here. For him too. And the notorious red carpet, as you can see here, for the elite masters and their entire nobility is always red to refer to their Pertasser, red house of pharaoh roots in lower Egypt, as roots are down there where the feet are, down in history, down at the root of a plant, the roots of a bloodline and standing on the metaphorically red ground of Lower Egypt where they originate from. And you can see it, it's all the, the, the notorious red carpet. Well, now you know why. So this is also the ultimate proof that Perset of Pharaoh's house of Seth belongs to the pharaonic nobility bloodline. Otherwise, he would not be allowed to set foot on the red carpet if he wouldn't be part of the nobility's red house bloodline. Therefore, here, Yashin and Boaz in form of the two Swiss cowbells clan hillbillies saluting and they are not allowed on the red carpet which you can see here as in front of a shop a sign saying dogs not allowed eh Swissy? well the Pope is a genuine priest of Amun from lower Egypt's red house so he is allowed on the red carpet. Also, that's why the Pope's red shoes, to refer to the priests of Amun of the Red House and the authentic obelisk in the Pope's backyard at home at the Vatican. Our masters do not do anything randomly. All numbers all colors, all sets of letters have a meaning for our masters. You all see the Swiss cross here? Oh look, there it is again, the Swiss cross on the Pope's ecclesiastical Swiss house shoes. Probably a warm present by Mr. Perset, the Swiss health minister to keep the Pope's feet warm. As Swissy puts that Swiss cross on nearly anything, including the Pope's own shoes. Shoes made in Swissyland, as well as the Pope, all made in Switzerland. Now let's dance humanity. One, two, three, one, two, three, faster, faster. One, two, three, one, two, three. Come on, dance with me in the devil's own marble ballroom. One, two, three, one, two, three. Faster, humanity, faster. Hell, faster, I summon you. One, two, three, one, two, three. Faster. You want to dance with me, Swissy? Yes. I'd love to, Frenchy. Let's show the gender bender jive to those slave children. And the bodyguard thinking here behind. Oh God, there we go again. Don't look now. Look, did you know Perset? He had a double. Look, there he is. And this guy only seems to have three fingers. It's interesting to look at the pictures. Greetings to you, Francis, priest of Amun. Welcome in the new Jerusalem, in our alpine base. We welcome you on the red ground of our ancestors at River Nile. Welcome, most honorable high priest of Pertasser. You all see the little finger here of the Freemasons, you know. Checking out his polls. People, 
we should force the entire pharaonic nobility and all those compulsive lying politicians to have their skulls measured up in a serious scientific study and academic comparison, just as they analyze us and pinch our DNA wherever and whenever they can. Because apparently, in the back of the skull, the honesty part is situated of these compulsive, flat headed liars. Look, they don't behave normal with all their lies. And they don't look normal with their reptilian flatheads, which would be worth checking out. If there's a correlation between this obvious craniometry and its behavioral structures, this, the pattern of social behavior. I don't know about you guys and girls, but I see the Swiss health minister here. Per set. There's, there's no skull behind. It's like going directly, the skull is going over into the neck and into the shoulders here as well, and here not. I know, I know, because of the Nazis, this is a taboo theme. So no one dares to touch the subject anymore, which is probably the exact thing our masters want us to do and not to look back at this anymore. But look, behavioral patterns start in the brain, which is in the skull and not in your foot, is it now? So, to the left here in this picture is the so-called dolicocephalic craniometry of the original Europeans. As I've shown you in the cephalic index map before in this video, which is a gentle skull according to Professor Osborne and to the right, a brachycephalic craniometry, a savage skull, according to Professor Osborne. The typical skull form of the Swiss pear set to the right, savagely trying to win and get there at the summit using all means available, saying to himself, me. Me, me. And <clears throat> so I, I read here what, what the professor says here a comparison of the round headed savage Prussian type of skull on the right and the gentle long headed Teuton type on the left, which Professor Osborne says represents now only 10% of the Germans. Now, why the professor calls the head to the right Prussian? Well, because when in 1291, the French speaking Knights Templars founded Switzerland and completely disappeared, all of a sudden, the German speaking Teutonic Knights took over and led another 200 bloody years of Crusades in the Baltic, in the exact area where Prussia lies, thus getting the Swiss brachycephalic round schools into Prussia. And mind you, the Prussian military attitude is in fact very Swiss mercenary like, the rigid Swiss mentality I found all over Switzerland, which is very, very Prussian. Well, no wonder, because it's the same people with the same skulls. And Voltaire, the French philosopher, he once said, Prussia is not a country with an army, but an army with a country, 
which is exactly what the Swiss say today and what I've heard many times Swiss saying in, in this era now while I was living there in Switzerland. They say Switzerland does not have an army, but Switzerland is an army. Professor Osborne is an expert in craniometry and craniology. And he also calls the back of the brachycephalic head of Perset, the Swiss health minister, flat occiput. Here it says here, flat occiput here to the right. And this is the dolicocephalic head, European, and this is the brachycephalic head, which is Swiss and apparently Prussian. And so he says the same thing here with the flat occiput, as I pronounce the word flathead. And if you look at the flat-headed skull of Mr. Perset, well, you see exactly it is flat, and exactly as the professor says, flat occiput. Of course, flat occiput is a bit more academic than saying a flatheader, but. Well, okay, this is YouTube, eh? And I'm an historian. I'm not a, um, I'm not an expert in uh, cephalic uh, skulls, but uh, we must have a look at it because it's very important. So, according to Professor Osborne, Perset has a savage Prussian type of skull. And oh boy. Were those Prussians a bunch of savages, under whom the whole of Germany and the whole of Europe immensely suffered. Therefore, it is tremendously important to examine this, especially when it concerns very powerful politicians like Mr. Perset whom has been given all the powers now to decide over life and death. Well, anyway, the Nazis were in fact our pharaonic nobility masters measuring up the slaves. So we could do the same, but the other way around. And in fact, this one here, between all these Nazis, is uh, Prince Philip of England. He was there as well. Der Führer sagt, alles gut, der Prinz Philipp ist schon wieder auf dem Rückweg mit unserem U-Boot, damit das englische Volk nichts davon merkt, dass er mit uns in Berlin in dem Führer seiner SS mitmarschiert hat. Translation, the Führer says, all is good, Prinz Philipp is already on his way back with our U-Boat, so the English people won't notice it that he was marching in the Führer's SS in Berlin. The uh, wife of Perset health minister is Muriel Zehnder Perset. And here she wrote a book. Here's her name, Muriel Zehnder. That's her maiden name. The family where she's from. And I'll tell you some more about it. And here is Perset, Berset in French. And she wrote this book, Écrire entre les langues, Littérature romande, Romance lit, uh, Literature. Uh, uh, Romance is um, the French they speak in Switzerland. They, you know, they're different. They don't want to say French, so they, spe they say Romande, well, it's, but it's the same language. So, and, and um, identité plurielle, that means multiple identities. Oh, how appropriate, isn't it? And down the, the, the book, you know, I'll show it to you now, there's a unicorn. So this is the cover of the book. And here it says again, um, uh, multiple identities. So you see, it's the same book. And here's a unicorn with an S. I mean, the unicorn, that's nobility, order of the garter. So him, as well as her, it's, um, they're all from the nobility, you know, it's all pharaoh. And this is what I call, you know, what, what is being called screening in the profile. 
and to understand Mr. Berset better, you know, with all the things, the, the, all the, the puzzle pieces around him, and then making in white a, a blank uh, image, you know, screen in the profile. So his wife is, you know, part of screening in the profile and what she's doing. Important, people. So here she is in the French uh, Elysee, which is the equivalent of the White House. I, get, I guess this is Macron, the president. It's a nice uh, Freemason checkerboard configuration, you know, representing the, um, the, the, the United Kingdom of Pharaoh with the Red House and the White House, you know, but the red is usually in black and um because it's a bit hard to find you know the red stones and um this is uh, the wife or whatever it is of uh, macron uh, brigitte uh, uh, macron so and this is the wife of um of uh, mr perset alain perset and her name is uh, muriel zender perset uh, I really wonder what's what she's wearing here. You know, this is important. It looks like a V or something, like a Templar V, and the, a blue thing with a white, whatever in it. You know? um, yeah, no, it's 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 all the nobility, right? They're all nicely smiling, just like the nobility. You know, things are going well for them. You know, they're just laughing their heads off. Eh? Her name, uh, Tsenda, etymologically comes from the aristocracy's tax collectors who took one tenth or a tithe in English of your salary or one tenth of your crop harvest. As Tsenda, Mrs. Muriel Tsenda Perset, has the German word Tsen for ten in it, ten da, ten, it means ten. So this is in Wikipedia, a saint, it means one tenth. This is in German, but I'll show it in, in a minute in English, the tithe, and also in French, because it's all related. And here it says, the begriff zehnt, zehnt, zehnter, you know, this, all, this sounds like zehnter, 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 even in Latin, it's called decem. Decem, yeah, and here, here, that's that's what they do here. You know, give me your money. You know, it's like a hold up. Still the same thing today. Eh? Uh, here it is, uh, the tithe in the Old Testament. I have to show this in German first because the name is German. You know, Zenta, Zenda. You know, it's unmistaking, unmistakingly her her name. There's Zenda. It has Zen in it. You know. You have to know history and also the mosaic laws you know it was you know abraham and the high priest of melchizedek uh, they, they all needed one tenth you know it's in genesis 28 and here in the uh, levites 27 and here uh, num i don't know what that means uh, uh, dtn Deuteronomy or something? I don't remember what it is. I'm, I'm not Christian, you know, so. And um, it's everywhere, you know? Yeah. The Zehnte, Zehnder, in Mittelalter, in the Middle Ages. You know, she's from the bloodline, you know? They want your money, they're ruling over us, and we have to work for them, for these masters. Abschaffung des, des Zehnten. The abdication of the of the tithe, Sender, you know. So, so they're doing something else now, you know. Um, even today, today the uh, uh, the tithe today, you know, churches still do it, you know. And of course, the church, you know, even the Mormons do it, and. Um, it's all the same thing, you know. The Bible is a pharaonic book. The aristocracy does it, the tenth, it's in the Bible, you know, the church is doing it. So it means th they're the same, you know, they all want 
a, a tenth, you know, stealing of you. Yeah. So, um, ah, here, Sprache, that means language. So I'll show you in English. There we go. The tithe in English. There we go. Well, it's not going to be all on it because um, it's going to be cut here. But you can, you know, you find it yourself, you know, the tithe here. Um, the Hebrew Bible, Genesis, you know, Deuteronomy, there's the difficult word. Stupid me. Difficult word, too difficult for me. <laughs> Malaki, Judaism, and even the Arabs do it. It's the same thing. You know, well, look it up yourself as it is cut here. You can look it up yourself, you know. And um, so that was the tithe. And uh, let's have a look. In France, it's called le dime, you know, a dime. It's where the word comes from. And there's the word 10 in it. Well, it's also cut. I should have done it a little bit better. Here it says, la, la dim, dim, or decim. You know, decima. It means a tenth. And um, yeah, in the Bible, the New Testament, Judaism, Catholic, um, Catholicism, 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 oh bloody hell, mixing all these words, you know, it's getting difficult, French, German, uh, I'm usually not that stupid as this, you know, yeah, les dîmes collectées par l'État, okay, so, you know, in French, it's the same thing as this was called une dîme, withholding the French word dix, for 10, becoming un dixième or un dim, pronounced and written like the word dime. Excuse me, my Catholicism blackout just before, like mixing all these languages. Well, let's say it was because of the Pope's red shoes. Right? So back to the tithe, the one tenth, ein tender, and uh, un dim in French, the dime. And therefore, beggars behaving like the king. You know, the slaves copy the masters and saying, Brother, can you spare me a dime? And you better start practicing this line because these times are coming back soon. As Pharaoh's nobility wants to put back a, a feudal system. The aristocracy are the ones who invented the taxes in the first place. So I read it out for you. The first estate, the clergy, and the second estate, the nobility, did not pay any taxes. And it's still like this today, people. Nothing has changed. The poor peasants and middle class citizens of the third estate paid all of the taxes in France. It's still like this, people. This is, why, this is why we have tax evasion going to the nobility, pharaonic base, Switzerland, because an aristocrat never paid any taxes and never has the Pope and the whole Vatican. That's why the Vatican, they have all their money in Switzerland. So here you can see how it works. Here you got the Pope and the clergy. This is the aristocracy and this here as well. They're all sitting on the on the slaves. I mean, that's you, right? Eh? And it's nothing has changed. So and if you don't pay these taxes, so you know, these ones here, they cannot parasite anymore, then you are in deep trouble. The jaywalkers usually refuse to pay taxes out of several reasons and one of the reasons is that in like so-called christian countries or muslim countries they had to pay double taxes the normal taxes to the nobility and they had to pay their own religious taxes and this eventually was um, because that they didn't pay any more taxes to the nobility uh, it, 
eventually leading to severe measures by the nobility, as you can see here. And look at the skull form here, the flatheads of these Nazis. I mean, this one could be Mr. Perset. I mean, it looks like him. This one as well, you know. This is the uh, the Prussian Swiss. Uh, well, they could fit in the cephalic index. And this Jay Walker proverb, well, says it all. Taxes grow without rain. What more to say? Okay, this video is not at all about jaywalkers, but as we're talking about the um, the wife of um, uh, Mr. Perset and the Tenda, the um, you know paying one tenth of your your salary and taxes, um, I have to tell you this, you know, and here you can see how much the jaywalkers hate to pay taxes. Uh, I mean, I I give them right, you know. Why pay taxes to this nobility? So here, when King Solomon passed away, the people of Israel gathered in the city of Shechem for the coronation of his son Rehoboam, having been burdened, burdened with heavy taxes during King Solomon's reign. You know, remember, he was married to, to the, the daughter of Pharaoh, so he had to, to treat her as a pharaoh. So, the, you know, the, uh, the jaywalker slaves had to pay for this. Eh? Remember the picture of the aristocracy sitting on the slave? Well, that's, that's what it is. So and the people, the jaywalkers, wished to know what Rehoboam's policies would be. On the bad advice of his younger advisors, Rehoboam confronted the people with this statement. So, you know, my, fa my father made your yoke heavy and I will add to your yoke. My father chastise you with whips but i will chastise you with scorpion thorns and um so he mean he was uh, he was going to raise the taxes eh? and um hearing these arrogant spiteful words the ten tribes of israel dispersed and set up their own kingdom in the north of israel so they left you know this is the exile of the ten lost tribes because of um, because of the taxes by Pharaoh by their own kings, you know they didn't want to pay it, so they, they thought, okay, well, let's go. You know, we're not going to pay it, as stubborn as they are, uh, which is a good thing, you know. And um, uh, and 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 the thing is, you know, you know, yeah, sadly. Such unjust taxes were commonly faced by the jaywalkers living in Christian or Muslim lands. Not only did they pay the normal taxes imposed on everyone, but they faced additional taxes specific to the jaywalkers. Under the Romans, it was the Fiscus Judaicus, um, etc. So they had to pay double taxes, you know, and um, more than others. So here the, the, they talk about the biblical tithe, tithes and um, this one here it says they have the uh, masa, where of course you, there's the word ma'at in it, you know, the, uh, the, the Egyptian goddess of, um, of uh, order. Uh, this is definitely from the goddess here. Yeah. So this is not an, an annual 10%, you know, on the uh, agriculture and the Ma'at, you know, the goddess, she was very much also, there was the uh, Ma'at in the, um, also in the agriculture, like there was the, the flooding of the Nile. And then, you know, then after that, there was order, you know, and all this. So, okay, well, anyway, this is, it's a very interesting article and, uh, well, you can check it out yourself. It's 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 very long, so um, this video is not about jaywalkers, but it's about taxes. But here you can see the um, the problem that of the nobility imposing taxes, and um, there are communities who don't um, accept it, and then well, they get whacked by Pharaoh. Right? So the entire Perset family has the roots of power in their names, in their line of working for, and even in the government, 
and uh, the, uh, the, um, the, the origins of their family going to school, everything. It all relates to big, big power, nobility. Well, I mean, just look at the picture. Mrs. Muriel Tsender Perset is making these weird artworks and shown in her exhibitions, which only the initiated may understand. Well, I analyze it for you. So here's her name, exposition of uh, Muriel Tsender. Here it says Muriel Tsender, the wife of the health minister Perset. And the whole world word was here transformations in one part in black and one part in white, just like the Freemason checkerboard configuration. You know? And it is in fact, in fact, the same transformation. Well, the word didn't get into the, uh, the framework here. So you have to believe me, it says transformations. Well, you can find it yourself otherwise. So this is, of course, the transformation from the old world's order, the vertical rule where they're all from, all these politicians, and the, the transformation to the new world's order, the horizontal rule of Freemasonry. So if you look at only this here in the oval, like the oval office, so, you know, this is a, um, it's a part of a coat of arms which I'll show you in a minute. You know, the, there's a lot of these coat of arms that have the Templar Vs in red and white, you know, like only one or sometimes two or three in the middle, you know, like this here, exactly like this. And here's like, it's like a mirror as well in it, you know. So you've got all these squares in it here for the square and all these circles here saying square and compass all around the oval. So, you know, meaning the nobility became the uh, Freemasonry, you know. And then in this coat of arms, there are three here, three lines. And in the middle, they are in white. And in the middle, you know, it's uh, supposed to be red here. So this is the concept of three and the concept of four. So it, else, it all says, you know, square and compass for the initiated. And this is a part of a coat of arms. So meaning the nobility uh, or Freemasonry and the new system, the, all these politicians, they come out of the nobility. You know, these are probably diamonds or something, you know, very noble as well. So, you know, it's not only the name, you know, the tax collector, Tsenda, the tithe, but also her artwork and, and everything they do, you know, the same for her husband, Mr. Perset, the, the, of the Pharaonic house of, um, of Seth. I mean, yeah, well, let's screen their profiles. Let's scream in their profiles, people. That's the only thing to do because they are hiding everything. And here it says once more, Muriel Tsenda, and then Perset behind it. Uh, maybe she made it when she wasn't married yet, or it's just like hiding, you know, so nobody thinks about uh, that she's from the house of Perset. Yeah. So it, it, it definitely is a, and here too, in black and white, you know, this is what they do, like, uh, you know, like pop art in the, in the 60s, you know, Freemasonry. It's, it's, it's also the transformation, you know, of the, um, well, you know, as the, the, it's a transformation in one word, you know, in the word transformations going from black to white and here from white to black, because the black actually is red and the red is the, is the, the nobility, the old world, the old world's order, the, uh, the red house of Pharaoh, the Pertasser. And there is this transformation from the old world's order to the new world's order, which is in white, the per hat, the White House. I mean, these people are initiated and they love, you know, to make some artworks or put it on a roundabout or at the front of their, their villas. And, you know, 
They, they love to spread their secret messages that only they understand. And here's another example of it. So there it is here. This is what she showed, these Vs here. There were three of them in her artwork, which is also at the opening of the pyramid. You find these things, and this is, you know, that's why you have a sergeant and all the army stuff. It's always in red and white, and it's uh, it's related to the Knights Templars. And there are a lot of uh, crest and uh, coat of arms of the nobility having this inside, just like this crest here with the two lions, yeah? And... Um, and here you see these round things all round, all around it, just as you saw these round things um, around the oval, you know, th that she has in her artwork. Exactly the same thing here. This and this is incorporated in her artwork. You know, it's only for the initiated. And so maybe the thing she, you know, inside, this was inside, and and this was like on that oval sort of round thing. It de depends on the perspective, you know, they're showing it or the angle. I mean, it's it's a crown, you know, it's a crown with this and then this here uh, inside of it, and it shows like squares and circles and you know for the square and compass, and it says transformation. So she's definitely from the nobility, and so is her husband. Mr. Perset, nothing has changed, people. It's still the same. It's still masters and slaves, or cat and mice, if you want. So I went here into the archives and the of uh, Bern, and the um, it's called the Library of the uh, Bourgeoisie of the Nobility, and it says they died out in 1793. So the uh, um, the you know the family of Tenda, like here. Um, and there are apparently there are six a wappen, it means a crest. Uh, of course, they haven't died out, you know, they just, um, you know, they just walk around anymore with all the uh, their titles and everything. And uh, so here's their coat of arms, it shows a bell, um, like the cowbells, clan hillbillies, you know, and um. Probably made a lot of money with that, and of course, working for the um, <clears throat> either for the church, you know, who never paid any taxes. Uh, coming back to the word tender, you know, taking one tenth, um, or the nobility. I mean, they all are the same anyway, and it's even a, a regiment here. And um, where was it? Um, it says somewhere there are a burger from uh, Bern, the so called Bern burger. Yeah, it says burger von Bern. It doesn't say burger with, a, with an umlaut, you know, with the two dots on the U, which would have meant a citizen. No, 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 no. It does not say this. It says burga, that means the ones who live in a castle, in a burg. Um, otherwise they wouldn't have a code of arms. So, well, I might look, have a look at all these other things here, but uh, it will, that will take too long, you know. So I'm just trying to screen the profile in, to screen in the profile. And this is actually where the word frame to get framed, you know, by the by the authorities or and what I'm doing here the other way around. I'm framing them, you know, put a frame uh, around them like uh, for the screen, for screening them in. You know? It's all related, you know, these words, they all have a meaning. Yeah, it's it's not for nothing, you know, they um, it's called uh, to get framed. Yeah? That's what literally happens. Well, in fact, it is very interesting, you know, the uh, for historians, you know, like me, the um, the archives is like the jackpot, you know. So there are more like uh, coat of arms of this family Tenda. Here yeah, it says Tenda, Tenda six. I don't know why the six. Yeah. 
And um, so, look, here's another one. That's 10 to 5 or whatever. There we go. That's another one. I don't know what it is. Um, yeah. Okay. And here is another one. It's all tender, you know, it's also the bells. The same as the um the the wife of the um of the health minister, which is her, her maiden name, yeah. And here's another one, tender number one. Oh, what do we get here? Oh look at that, it's a cop. Okay. The holy grail, look at that. Uh, oh, I love archives, you know. I used to spend like months in the archives, you know. <laughs> um, yeah. And uh, let's go back. Oh, here. Look, this is the burnt, uh, the um, Wappenburg, Bernisches Wappenburg from 1700, the, um, the coat of arms of, um, of Bern. Now, let's have a look what it says at, um, at Perset. We can find it. Well, here's the A. Is there any Perset? No, there isn't. Uh, hiding it, you know. But well, I mean, Bern or Bern is just it's, it's just one town, you know. And uh, you see, only in Bern, how many coat of arms there are. It's incredible, you know. It's only it's the capital of Switzerland, eh? You know, all these parasites, eh? Uh, let's have a look at this Z. Yeah, here, look. They're here, where they are. That's where they all are. Uh, number four. We uh, also Tenda. We didn't have number four yet, did we? Uh, oh, here's one Tenda. That's that's was uh, was in the Wikipedia. You know, Tenda. Uh, it's the tithe, one tenth. So shall we have a look? Because th this is the same family. You know, Tenda or Tenda. So it's, they they just change the name you know let's have a look okay hey? there we go i wouldn't be surprised you know finding that thing with the with the with the v's you know tender so you know these were the tax collectors of uh of the corn you know give me one tenth of the corn it's also the um uh the fatches you know like bundled together you know Typical. And here, okay, here's number four. Uh, let's have a look what this, what this is showing. Also, Tenda. Oh, look at this. The Nazis had this one. Yeah, it's it's runic. Yeah, it says Tenda number four. And remember, this is the same name as the wife of um, um, of the health minister, Berset, uh, and is uh, and her lovely artwork okay this is the last one because you know okay we're back at the first one i'm sure we find more things in it but um you know you got an idea so here's another one of that very powerful fam uh, family and he was working for the swiss tv you know which is the uh which is the voice of uh of pharaoh you know the TVs, uh, the Lügenpresse, yeah. Uh, so then he went to, uh, he was born in the Emmental in Röthenbach, yeah. And um, uh, uh, Christian Tenda, the tax collector, yeah. And then he went to Geneva, yeah. Ah, the college. Oh, he also went to a, uh, like a college in Geneva, just like Mr. Perset, yeah. Might be interesting, you know, to check this one out, but, oh, it looks very posh, yeah. But, um, it was founded in 1559, so 
Well, that's pretty sure that's for the elite, eh? but I'm, it's going to take too long, you know, you've got an idea. So he was at the, uh, the, the Cannes Festival, you know, the Swiss TV, and then he's, uh, he even got an Oscar. He got two Oscars. Oh dear, he got two Oscars, look at that. And um, uh, he even started to work. He became the chief of TV of the, um, here, of the European community. Very powerful people. And then they, they not, they're not going to tell you any insider information like I'm doing, right? Eh? Yeah. He is the special um, counselor for the um, European community and, and their videos, you know. It's also a very fishy logo, this one, eh? And um, that's the same family. It's very powerful bloodlines, right? Eh? So th these are the videos, the films he made. Uh, here, the revolution and the roses. <laughs> you know, the revolution is white, the roses is the old world's order. There you go. I mean, framed them, eh? Framed you, boy. Got you. The revolution is white, it's the new world's order, and the roses are red. That's the old world's order. So this guy, he's initiated. Absolutely. You know? Uh, what what else did he make? Like, oh, he even made like Bollywood videos. Wow. In Mexico, in Almeria in Spain. Uh, Martin Gré, that was a jaywalker. He had a very tough life. I I, I read a book about this guy. Uh, he was in some sort of a concentration camp where he. Um, uh, he was 15 years old and he, he found little a little girl, you know, that survived the gas chamber and then he strangled her with his own hands because he didn't want her to be burned alive. Um, it's a very tragic book. Okay, well, this film is not about jaywalkers, I told you. So, so I'd really like to creep up on her from behind and say, Oh, look at that nice artwork. Turn around. So I can have a short glance at the back of her head. Look, she also has a website here. Muriel Tenda. C-H, it means uh, Confederatia Helvetica. And here's that famous artwork of her. So coming back to her name, Tenda, and the tithe tax collectors of her bloodline and its relation to the new Facebook money world. The word dime or dime in French can be found in the new Facebook money transfer company called Diam. Here's the logo with the concept of three. And this is in Wikipedia, Diam. It's exactly the same thing, it's Dima. So if you're gonna use it, they're gonna take one tenth of your money. You know, that's that's what it means. You know, it's still the same nobility, you know, parasiting on you, taking your money. It's in their logos, it's in their words, they're announcing it all over. Nothing has changed. Eh? So this is gonna be the uh the money transfer and direct taxes you know taken off immediately which is also a reference to the latin proverb carpe diem meaning seize the day or carpe diem same word so carpe diem or carpe diem actually means ignore tomorrow do as you please and forget about any consequences like here, used to urge someone to make the most of the present time and give little thought to the future, which is used to counter the more religious original form of memento mori, meaning think about tomorrow and that you will be judged in the hereafter. And as the name Zuckerberg is German, and means sugar mountain, 
you might say that Mr. Sugar Mountain is trying to seduce you into the end times chip with his Sugar Mountain candy shop. Phonetically, in English, his Sugar Mountain end times shop sounds like die um, die um, die them, them us, we die, die em. There's the word die in it and the word and the letter M for Mason. Die M, die Mason. And the concept of three for our masters. I mean, how can you choose a name for a company where it optically says die? How can you do this? In the promotion video here, it says you can send a link all over the world in a second. So why not send money all over the world in a second? Which is, of course, an apparent big advantage compared to the actual damn banking system. But as with any advantage presented by our masters, there will be a hook somewhere, which is usually combined with the actual tendency of more and more comfort and less and less freedom. Just as Somerset Moore once said, if a nation values anything more than freedom, it will lose its freedom. And the irony of it is that if it is comfort or money that it values more, it will lose that too. An interesting name, Somerset, that's Sumeria, and Set, like in Perset, and Mer is the word for pyramid in Pharaonic. So Sumeria, you know, this is the proof that Sumeria was built by the, by the pharaohs, because it already says so in the language, you know, in the etymology. We all look at the front part of the head called the face, but faces lie. All these lying politicians smile. The eyes lie, mouth lies, the ears lie. So maybe we'd better start looking at cranial features of that thing on top of your necks. Because it's absolutely useless to look any longer at these faces and to listen to what these faces say. And it looks like these brachycephalic flatheads like to dominate. Therefore, finding this a lot with boxers. Here, yeah, look, there's the whole part of the skull is missing. It's going direct over into the neck. As Professor Osborne told us, this is the Prussian skull form or brachycephalic. So there is a connection here. And some more boxers. Look, they all got the same heads and the same necks. They all want to dominate. Uh, just the same as politicians and aristocrats. So there is a correlation, you know, between the cephalic index and the, uh, and the social behavior. So forget about looking at faces, you know, they all lie. And some more boxers. I mean, look at their necks, look at their cephalic skull forms. Look at it, you know. And, and don't look at the faces, you know, they all smile, they look nice. But if you look at the necks, you know, you can see that they can kill you, like they can snap you in a, in a moment, you know. You know, these faces are lying, this one too, you know, because they're ready to, to, to beat you up. So that there's, I mean, there's something wrong here. They're ready to beat you up and they're smiling. So, you know, the whole face is lying, you know. So, and people even find it cool and they're the heroes like, well, 
th there's nothing cool about it, you know. Look, and another one. Look at the neck here. Look at the head. Boxers dominate. Here, yeah. look at the uh, cephalic, look at the head forms, you know. Well, Dr. Osborne, Professor Osborne, he would say this is a Prussian. <laughs> you know. Yeah, look, a U.S. Navy SEAL. Look at the neck. You know, he scores very high on the Prussian cephalic index. You know, it's the same. Dominate, destroy. It's Prussian violence. Um, yeah, look, there he is again. The U.S. Navy SEAL with a Prussian skull. You know, it says how to be a leader. You know, I mean, take it easy, mate. You know. There's more, there's, there's other things, you know, for these skulls, the only thing is important, dominate, how to be a leader, how to be the strongest, how to destroy, how to, it's Prussian, it's brachycephalic, and be aware of politicians having it. Look, here are some politicians, look, there's no neck, the, the same flat skulls, you know, they want to, to, to lead us, they want to be the leader, they want to dominate, they want to be the richest, they want to be the strongest, and, uh, you know, and, and we believe them, you know, Pe most of the people, they love them, you know, why? Look, there he is again, the Prussian, you know, under the fluffy down here, with it feathers or whatever it is, it's flat, you know, it's, it can make a straight line, there's nothing. And they all want to dominate, you know, I've got the youngest woman, I've, I've got most money, and you listen to me, you take my orders, and, you know, they're dangerous, they're dangerous. Look, there he is again, the Prussian, he found himself another Prussian, look, no neck here. You know, they're in uniforms, they've got all the weapons and all the power. They're dangerous. They're destroying the whole world, people. Look, and these ones too. Look, look at the necks, you know, and there are hardly any necks. And this, it's all f almost flat here, you know, and, and the whole skull form. Very Prussian, <clears throat> as Dr. Professor Osborne would say. And... <clears throat> This is, of course, this is, you know, it's Jay Walker out of, um, out, of, out of Prussia, you know. Jay Walkers were all over, also in Prussia. And this guy is a Prussian. Look, he looks like a Prussian. And he's from St. Petersburg, which is right in the middle of the Prussian Empire, people. Prussian, Prussian. And they got the whole world by the balls, you know. They want to destroy it, you know. It's it's only, you know, control, dominate, 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 dominate. You know, he seems to be saying, you know, with his with a hand on his chest, "Oh no, I want to help you. I don't want to dominate you." You know, yeah, look, this one too. It's flat. There's a whole lobe of the head is missing. I want power. I wait here. Look and and. The smiles, they're just deceiving us with their smiles, you know. They're just thinking of more power. This is a skull form that wants to dominate. And this too. It's brachycephalic, you know. And, it, you know, even the professor, the professor was Osborne. He says it, you know. There has been, you know. People, a real expert, have been analyzing this. And it's true, you can see it. Look, look at this skull form. They all want power, more, you know, more, more. And they deceive us with their, I don't know, smiles or whatever it is, you know. The face smiles, you know, what the, the face talks, you know, it, it's all a lie. And this one too, the same Prussian skull form. He scores very high at the Prussian cephalic index. And he was also in the special forces, just as the US Navy SEAL I, I just showed you. So, wow, what a successful life of domination, you know, being in special forces and dominate others with politics. You know, you can see it in the skull form. Well, we all know this one here. Look at his head. It's Mr. Perset, the one we started with. It looks like all these politicians, they are of one and the same family. 
and actually they are and look at this little finger here freemasonry is checking out his pulse eh? it's the best and here a couple of aristocrats here look at the skull form it's it's prussian it's uh brachycephalic well i mean this bloodline is gotha coburg it's from germany they want power you can't trust their faces you know you better trust the back of the skull people look there's no neck it's flat just like joe biden same very similar and uh, here they are in the order of the garter robes both of them you know pretending to be serious you know it's all about power you know the the, the, the clothing the all they do you know all the, the clothing they wear the cars they have it's all about power and more and more they're destroying the whole world they're destroying humanity just be, because they want more and they kill for it you know just to get more and to dominate yeah look at them look at the neck you know and he's say, saying it himself you know the concept of three the which is them the, uh, the the nobility you know our masters and uh, the, the, this front part is lying you know the, the, the back part is, is the only part which is telling the truth you know uh, it's a domination dominates you know like shall i dominate you tonight or are you gonna dominate me oh well yeah look another prussian here it's flat here this is flat yeah this this also quite a lot so shall i dominate you are you gonna dominate me tonight yeah dominate domination again goes together with the skull form here yeah, look and another prussian it's, it's quite flat here you know he scores like quite high on the on the prussian cephalic index so um, like are you gonna dominate me tonight or shall i dominate you tonight you know it's it's all about domination it's uh, brachycephalic domination power i'm the best i'm the best singer i'm i've got the most money I'll, i made it in this life i'm successful i'm a winner well, you know i mean see here look at these skulls again professor osborne and then look at the next picture i'm gonna show you now here look this is long and this is short from here to here and this is flat flat occiput here it says and there's even worse you know like cutting off right here you know or, or uh, here if you look at biden you know it's like duck you know it's not like this it's, it's not he's not one of us you know now remember the picture of dr professor osborne look this is long you know just it's not only hair but there's something more underneath it's as long and this is like joe biden this is very short distance and there's a whole lump it's not there you know joe biden and, and and trump is the same you know it's 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 also like going like straight you know um look at it well you know carefully uh, it's it's funny the the pictures are the same side here is the dolicocephalic and here's the brachycephalic this is European and this is Prussian or Swissy. They are the same. Swissy is Prussian. The Prussians are the Swissies, the Teutonic Knights. Well, here's Joe Biden. Remember the picture I just showed you before? It's like this. The picture before, it's the cephalic ancestor of uh, Joe Biden. Yeah, like this. And don't look at the faces anymore. They all lie. You know, it's all they're all actors. They all lie. Forget this part of the skull, the right side here. Only look at the left side of the skull, like in this case. In this case, it's the other way around. You know, he, you know, he's all he's thinking. What what are you smiling about? You know, like <laughs> the Prussians. You know, they were a militarist power. They invented militarism, the Prussians, you know, and it comes out of the Teutonic Knights. It comes out of Switzerland. Switzerland still is militarism, you know.
They say we don't have a state, uh, we don't have an army, we are an army. Same thing as the Prussians. You know, the, the whole center of power is in the Alps, it's in Switzerland. So you really need to have a look at this, you know. And I'd really like some real, you know, cephalic experts and professors, you know, to go on and analyze this, you know. We, we don't have to analyze these phases anymore, you know, they all look the same. Uh, and the, you know, and these faces that they all tell us the same lies. You know, look, there's some more Joe Biden here. Duck, Donald Trump, Joe Biden, the rest of them. Chuck, this is Joe Biden. Same uh, cephalic ancestor. And there he is again, Joe Biden, the uh, cephalic descendant here. Chuck, same as the other one just before. Craniometry people, cephalic index people, Professor Osborne people. This is very important, especially in these days of total deceit. And there it is again, another cephalic ancestor of Joe Biden. Chuck and Trump and the rest of them. You know, and Mr. Bassett. Chuck. Cephalic ancestors of the ruling class. So, just before I showed you the brachycephalic dominators, boxers, politicians, navy seals, and um, special forces, and aristocrats, although pharaonic mummies show rather the opposite and long dolicocephalic head forms. This is dolicocephalic, long. So, what happened? Did the dominators take over? Because the DNA uh, proves us, you know, the ones in power and the aristocracy are the elite, which I'm showing you in part one of the Swiss Beast, Home of the Devil. Well, I'll explain in a minute what happened, but first something else before that. Since the flatheads brachycephalic have a lot of the neocortex brain lobe missing in the back of the skull, where the compassion is situated, automatically and procedurally the reptilian brain takes more place in the skull, where fight or flight dominates through fear and priorities like to multiply and to eat, the so-called factors of domination compared to the compassion of the neocortex that lacks in the brachycephalic uh, skulls. So this here is called the neocortex, the new brain considering the development of the human brain, neocortex. And when there's a whole, when it's like flat, and there's a whole part missing, where the emotions are, where compassion is, you know, then automatically the reptilian brain, this one here, the light blue one, it takes procedurally more place of the entire brain in the skull. And this is where domination is, where fight is, and I'm the best, I'm the best politician, I give the orders, you listen to me, or a boxer, I beat you up, you know. And this is the middle brain, this is mammal, you know, it's like, you know, um, all the, uh, the, the, the mammal things, you know, like the animals, um, like uh, the, the mammal animals in comparison to the reptilian animals and this is what well, you can find here care and you know, but but this this is the very human part of the brain and in the brachycephalic skull forms which you can see in all those dominators and aristocrats and uh, politicians, boxers, navy seals, there's a whole part of the of the compassion part is missing. It's only dominating, you know, gets more place, percentually. 
So here you can see this again. Now it's the other way around. This is the front side of the of the head, and this is the back side here. So here you see the lizard brain here. And when there's a whole part missing here of the human brain, like this here, then th this percentually of the whole mass of the brain, it, it gets more place, you know, it, it's more like fight and flight and it's, uh, you know, it's also called the uh, cerebellum. Bellum, it means uh, war in Latin. You know? So, you know, this is the war part, you know, Navy SEALs, boxers, uh, you know, politicians, uh, aristocrats, um, uh, uh, these aristocrats that they gave us thousand years of wars, you know, Sera Bellum, Bellum, this is the war part, yeah. Uh, this is the mammal brain here, emotions, memories, habits, attachments, you know. So, um, compassion, also here. And this is the human brain called the neocortex. This was called the limbic system, and this is the neocortex. You know, the language, abstract thoughts, imagination, consciousness, you know, consciousness. You know, you, you repeat this, consciousness, it's in here. This one here, if it's cut, you know, there's a whole part missing, the back of the skull, consciousness is missing, you know. Like if it's some heads, you know, they're like this. So what is it? 20% of the consciousness is missing. Reasoning rationalizing neocortex so this is the neocortex limbic system lizard brain the cerebellum yeah very important don't look at the faces anymore forget about this part you know they all lie so again another picture this is the neocortex this is the front of the brain it's logic abstract thought but also compassion here's the limbic system here in the middle mammalian animals the mammals emotions empathy parental you know and this arrow is wrong it should be going to here the reptilian complex survival reproduction fight or flight to dominate for the dominators and uh reproduction a eh, prince andrew reproduction here, mammalian brain, emotions, higher thinking in here, and reptilian brain, this one here. So the reptilian brain here, it's survival aggression. So boxers, politicians, um, Navy SEALs, aristocrats, you know, survival aggression. And imagine all the punches the boxers get as well, you know, it, it destroys probably the uh the the neocortex even more uh, you know and the uh and, and and this and this one stays you know the the reptilian brain it, it, it doesn't get uh that the punches don't get here in the middle it only destroys the uh the neocortex so it, it gets even worse then with all the punches you know especially if you see all these politicians who lack some serious brain lobes at the back of their heads. It's like, you know, he's saying, you know, listen to me. I'm your leader. I'm your dominator. I'm the most powerful one. That's, you know, that's what he's saying. That's what he's thinking. And there's a whole part missing here. And women love these type of men with these dominator skulls who take it all, who provide for all who have it all, while the ones with their neocortex intact have invented it all for these ones, who just take it all. And this is one of the two main reasons the European dolicocephalic neocortex skulls are disappearing, because females love to multiply with the dominator skulls who own everything what the other skulls have invented. The lie also comes out of the reptilian brain and its specific cranial features that goes with that. 
And that's why all who don't want to be dominated by the various dominators on all key positions and those dominators who want to force the dominator poison into our veins, those who don't want to be dominated most likely all have dolicocephalic skulls, thus making them disappear, these skulls, out of the cephalic index in a rapidly increased way taken over by the dominator invader skulls at an increasing speed due to their so-called health measures against our health, so to speak. So this is in Switzerland, the, this one here, I, I, I hardly dare to pronounce this. And this here too, they made a, another alliance here, you know, you can read it here. I think it even has a, a, a Tau symbol on it or a Swiss cross or... Well anyway, you know, if you take away one third of the Swiss cross, you get a Tau symbol. Yeah? And that's again the concept of three and four. So look at this. The um, the who director I don't pronounce is Gebre uh, Jesus, whatever that's coming from Tedros Adhanom Gebre Jesus. I think it sounds very uh, Egyptian Coptic. Um, you know, there's a lot of descendants of the pharaohs there. Um, the Swiss health minister Alain Berset signed the BioHub initiative with a global uh, 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 pathogen repository in Spietz laboratory on the sidelines of the opening of the 74th World Health Assembly, Geneva, Switzerland, to 2021. Well, what first, what is in Spietz? Well, there's Brugger und Tomet. You know? So not very good for your health, by the way, eh, Mr. Perset because they pop out our eyes with a, uh, with a 40 millimeter gun. We're also in speed. So why don't you do something about that? Eh? If you really would care for our health, which you don't. So Switzerland signed, here it is. Switzerland signed a deal with the uh, uh, WHO on Monday to host a global repository for, uh, 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 with uh, 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 potential to bolster international defenses against emerging threats. See, it's always in Switzerland, everything. The BioHub laboratory will store and analyze pathogens from across the globe and enhance the rapid sharing of information between labs around the world. Well, you can read it all for yourself, but what I want to show you here, yeah. The facility will be hosted at the Swiss Defense Ministries Biological Safety Laboratories in the lakeside town of Spietz. Uh, this is the Swiss military industrial complex. I already made a video about it. And Brugger und Tomet of Spietz, they make part of this Swiss industrial military complex. You know, it's one and the same thing, you know, um, just as they do with a 40 millimeter long uh, launchers, you know, they try to kill us and maim us, which they will also do with their health measures. Eh? Yeah, the Swiss health minister, Alain uh, Perset. All right, you can read it all yourself, you know, so it's the military. You know, it's all weaponized. The whole thing is weaponized. It's the military behind it, you know. And uh, they even say it themselves. You know, they're making one alliance after the other. And it's always centralized in Switzerland, where one of the, where the seven heads, and here one of the seven heads of the beast is there as well. So there's the seventh head of the beast from the house of Seth, the Perset. And um, it, it's all by the, the, the Swiss military complex. As I've shown you already that the laboratory they have in China, well, it's exactly where it all's supposed to have started, you know? And, um, and, and remember the, um, 
Novartis, very criminal company from Switzerland, who even did tests uh, unknowingly on uh, on Polish uh, homeless people, you know, with um, where was it again? I I cannot pronounce certain words. Um, uh, where is the word? Yeah, this one here. This word here. With these things, they did tests with these things here on homeless people with uh, more than 20 people died. No, oh, why, why? Why aren't they talking about this, you know? Because everything is a lie. Don't look at their faces anymore, you know? And and all the things these faces say, you know, forget about it. Just look at the, uh, look, look at the cranial forms, you know? Look, look at the cephalic index. Or watch all these boxers and kickboxers who beat up loads of people and therefore must completely lack human compassion and have heads that run over into their necks in a straight line. And not really just because of all the muscles or these aristocrats with their typical skull forms who have no compassion for their sex victims and never had any compassion throughout the history of the nobility. So this is Prince Philip, the father of Prince Charles and Prince Andrew. You see, it's all flat. Duck. You know, there's a whole lump of compassion that's missing here. Um, of the original European cephalic, uh, which is on the European cephalic index, you know. This is coming from somewhere else. They are not European. It seems that all the characteristics like fear, the drive to eat and multiply and fight or flight, of the dominant reptilian brain in certain skull forms can be added up into one word to dominate. And this one here with the Donald haircut of the same cephalic bloodline has a Swiss mummy for ancestor. I already made a video about that. It's the same Prussian cephalic as the other one in the US with the same hairstyle. Well, just look at the back of his head. Boris de Pfeffel Johnson, another aristocrat and prime minister of England. Yeah, there he is in Wikipedia, Alexander Boris de Pfeffel Johnson. Now, everything with de and a double name, it's, it's all nobility, which is blue tie, tie for the war, because he wants war or a civil war. Boris de Pfeffel. Yeah, look, here they are. The Pfeffel family, uh, ennobled as von Pfeffel, is a German Bavarian uh, family. And I don't know about you, but you know, yeah, well, this is Prince Philip. You know, there's no doubt, you know, very, very similar. And look how the aristocracy, they've got these long pharaonic noses, you know, and nothing at the back of the head. You know? uh, definitely Prince Philip here. Wow. So, and here's the story. A mummified corpse of a woman buried in the Barfuser church in Basel, Switzerland, was identified uh, in 2018 uh, as Anna Katharina Bischoff, uh, which was the ancestor of uh, of Boris de Pfeffel. I'll already show that to you. So here's Boris, born in New York City in America. You know, he's an American ruling over over England. So here, you know, the the line going back here. Uh, here's already de Pfeffel, and here de Pfeffel, it's all aristocracy, here becomes von Pfeffel, which is the same thing. 
von Kriegelstein, probably von Epstein as well, as he has big pals with uh, Prince Andrew. And here's the mummy, um, the Swiss mummy uh, from Basel, Anna Katharina Bischoff. We're still in a feudal system, we're still being ruled by the nobility. And therefore, I found another brachycephalic flathead amongst these pink list killers. This is Rock Hudson, or this was Rock Hudson. You see here? Duck, like Joe Biden. Because here as well, their game is to dominate or to be dominated. As in fight or flight. No? To dominate or to be dominated. Fight or flight of the reptilian brain. Well, I think I choose the flight. And, um, you know, and if they dominate, well, you look at the back of the skull then, eh, I suppose. Yeah, look, this it's all straight line. This is Rock Hudson. I guess this is John Wayne. Looks to be the the same skull form dominating persons well this one was a very it was a well-known freemason same thing just as the swiss health minister Perset is dominating an entire population because this is what he enjoys most to be the winner in a marathon run and dominate the rest yeah look here's his name and still smile while doing so. Because to dominate is what his reptilian brain tells him to do so, making him smile and enjoy his dominating position. And here he seems to say, my reptilian brain is as small as this, but it's very dominant. And so am I look around you no one smiles anymore in the streets or in the supermarket no one smiles except our politicians they all smile having the time of their lives and here you can see mr perset with arnold schwarzenegger two terminators together shaking hands smiling and laughing and look at Arnold's Prussian skull, the same cephalic offspring. This portrays exactly the actual tendency in society that everything that has been invented by sensitive people with compassion in their large neocortex brain lobe is all in the hands of ruthless businessmen and ruthless politicians who only think of getting more and more entirely led to dominate others led by their reptilian brains of fuck eat dominate fear fight or flight while the sensitive people with other more sensitive compassionate brains get completely destroyed now these dominators dominate the whole of humanity with their bug wars insanity and their very foreign health ministers like the one from the house of seth the lord of chaos mr perset and in Switzerland, with a very high concentration of brachycephalic flatheads, they try to dominate you all the time, to make you do and think what they want you to do and what they want you to think. And when these Swiss flat skulls don't succeed in their oppression, then they get very mean with all sorts of lies, police, Gestapo, and all sorts of authorities. Me, personally, I get very hairy under these type of conditions, and I resign entirely 
just continue doing my own thing and attack the attackers. Which actually happened like this, making me become the most hated person in Swaziland. Together with my entire family, the most hated family in Swaziland, and my young children, the most hated offspring in Swaziland. The Perset Health Minister studied political science at the Swiss University of Neuchâtel, meaning the New Castle. Just as Macron and many other politicians have studied political science. As it had been already concluded in the inner circles that the young Perset was going to be a ruling politician. In the footsteps of his mother, Solange Perset, of the Great Council of Switzerland. I read it out for you. When you realize all your siblings went on magical quests and all you got was a degree in political science. Here he is in Wikipedia, Alain Bercy, Perset, Alain Perset. There he is, smiling again. Uh, he knows there's a picture being taken. So, Perset studied political science yeah, at the University of Neuchâtel, the new castle. Perset lives in a place called Misery, so appropriate and quite smart, as the name of the place scares the rest of us away, so the masters enjoy all the privacy they need. Here it says, he's from a place called Misery. It's like, who the hell wants to live in Transylvania? After having seen one or two Dracula films. Count Dracula, that is. And with a real nasty castle too. So, I wonder what type of skull he had, this Count Dracula, like in dominating your victims. As the Count Vlad Dracul is a forefather of him here, I guess Count Dracula was a blood-sucking flatheader. So, Count Dracula most likely had a brachycephalic skull just like these two here. Prince Charles officially is a real descendant of the Count, as nobility only marries nobility, giving this charming cephalic bloodline. And you all see the octagon here? A Swissy octagon. Queen Elizabeth II is related to Vlad the Impaler, which makes Charles the heir to Dracula's bloodline. This is official. So don't you worry if you'd be now standing in front of the mirror while fumbling the back of that thing where your brains were supposed to be and think by yourself, geez, holy moly, I'm one of them. No, of course not. Because there are some other important factors, like being initiated and belonging to the bloodline. Like through centuries of rape by our masters and their invading armies, you might have their DNA and skull which doesn't necessarily mean you're a bad person, of course not. But you will have the potential of being recognized by them and even reloaded 
as a sleeper agent, which happened with Adolf Hitler, for instance, although he did not have the brachycephalic craniometry, and neither does Macron, by the way. But we cannot neglect all these political and nobility hotshots like Trump, Putin, Prince Charles, Prince Andrew, Prince Philip, Perset, etc., with a whole part of the human lobe in their skulls missing, and one medal for each girl raped, and red for the Pertasser Red House nobility. Neither can we neglect the density of non European craniometry in Switzerland, where the world's elite wealth and power is concentrated. And we cannot neglect its effects it has on human behavior, which was proven scientifically. I'm just a rogue historian with some peculiar ideas and not an expert on craniometry, so I urge the experts to further investigate the matter because it's very important. It uh, was in fact the Hyksos horse riders, as you can see here, uh, who ruled over ancient Egypt for 150 years, who through massive rape, as all invading armies did, gave the brachycephalic skull form to the original dolicocephalic pharaohs before the empire could rise again, in the meantime forcibly swapped their skulls for another model, but being still the same bloodline with everything that goes with it, like the DNA. Here it says the Hyksos, and this guy is Abisha the Hyksos. You know, look at his, his skull form, you know, it's like it's Donald Trump, you know, the, the hairstyle. And if, the, if you think away the hair here, you know, it's tuck, it's flat, you know, like this. Typical brachycephalic, like Boris Johnson and Prince Andrew Trump or Perset from the house of Seth, the Lord of Chaos and they ruled over ancient Egypt for 150 years with um, all the rape and everything going on with it. And in fact, they, um, the pharaohs, they invited the Hyksos to come. This is why the, um, these nomadic horse riders, they could rule over, over a world empire, a super empire. Because, as I explained in the Pharaoh show, my first video, uh, because of the incest, you know, brothers and sisters getting married to keep the pharaonic spirit and the mind pure and the, and the wealth and the power amongst themselves, just as aristocrats still do today, um, you know, because of the incest, uh, the... Um, the children were even born dead, you know, with the spiny bifida and open back. So they knew they were going to die out and needed a new body. So they invited the uh, the Hyksos to come, but as they were quite violent, they took over. So they, after 150 years, they got finally got rid of them after mixing and getting a new body, you know. But all the time, the children, they were... Um, race in the pharaonic way and so after five generations they had a new body but still with the pharaonic mind initiations and everything that goes with it but you know because as these guys who took over completely they took over they took another tribe who were the uh, another nomad tribe you know uh, running around in the desert who therefore became God's chosen people because um, Pharaoh, they considered themselves as gods, 
you know, like Louis the Fourteenth and all this, you know, the Sun King of France. So they were chosen to um, to mix with Pharaoh. That's why Sarah, ah, Sarah, she's the queen mother of the Jaywalkers. And Sar, it means the queen, and Ah, it means pregnant. So she gave birth to the whole line of uh, jaywalkers. And, um, but of course, amongst the jaywalkers, there, there are the Erevrav and the Pharaonic nobility uh, amongst the, the people of the jaywalkers. And just as we all have, you know, we all have them amongst our, ourselves and ruling over us. You know, look, some more hexas as they were painted by the uh, pharaohs. And look at this skull, you know, it ends here, it goes tuck, you know, it's very brachycephalic. Whereas the pharaohs, you know, usually traditionally had more dolicocephalic long skulls. Very brachycephalic. I've shown you a lot of examples of this skull form throughout this video. And this is a typical uh, brachycephalic flat skull here. This is the back of a Hyksos king called Senefkai, who lived, roughly speaking, one and a half, uh, three and a half thousand years ago in between minus 1800 and minus 1600. And this is, you know, it's larger at the back than here. It's typical brachycephalic Prussian Swiss and not the long pharaonic skulls, the dolicocephalic skulls. Uh, Senepkai, a Hyksos king ruling over Egypt for about 150 years, the Hyksos ruled over Egypt. So here it is the Hyksos king Senep Kai, Senep Kai, and uh, with the brachycephalic skull. And here it says, like uh, minus 1650. And what if? because they show a lot of truth in the movies, like transmitting a lot of internal messages amongst each other. So what if in Planet of the Apes and invading ape army with that missing lobe at the rear of their skulls, like Trump, Biden, Berset, Prince Charles, and all these top boxers beating up others. What if, if Planet of the Apes just refers to those invading Hyksos horse riders with their definite brachycephalic flat skulls were just seen as apes by the pharaonic master race, the superior Aryan aristocratic race. Looking at the old hieroglyphs, these Hyksos or Hika Kasut in Demotic definitely have brachycephalic flatheads, according to the pharaohs similar to primates. And just as the Hyksos horse riders did in the movie Planet of the Apes, the apes come riding on horses, invading the humans. As the pharaohs considered themselves as the only real humans, just as their nobility does, who still see the rest of mankind as apes. Therefore, the word Aryan is the same as Aristocratic, 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 a it means pregnant and ri it means the sun, born out of the sun, and a second world war 
to bring the aristocratic Aryans back on the throne of their German empire, just as what happened three and a half thousand years ago in ancient Egypt. I read it out for you. The former enemies of North and South, which is Lower Egypt, the Pertasser, and Upper Egypt, the Perhet, are united again in common defense of their Aryan birthright. It's like in my first video, the Pharaoh show, showing all the occult and secret symbols when you look around. So now look around and watch the skulls and necks. Forget the faces because they all lie and nobody smiles anymore in the streets. Just watch and look around because the answers are there in plain sight. You just need to open your eyes. These beings or whatever you want to call them, don't listen to reason. And they're absolutely cold in terms of compassion, or rather the lack of compassion. So the only way to stop them is through hard physical action. So run, Mr. Perset, show us how fast and how far you can run.